So you describe yourself in the One Nation tradition. Is the current Conservative government in that tradition, or are you a bit of an oddity in today's Conservative Party? I hope it is in that tradition, and I think it's important that, that it is. It remains in that tradition. I think it is corny, but I think, on the whole, elections are won from the centre ground, and I think it is important that you don't just appeal to people who are very strong core voters, but you actually reach out across across the, that divide and probably also bring in people from the centre who may not traditionally have thought about voting Conservatives. So I, th I think there is a sense of and I think it's something that we as a party must remember that, you know, if we look back at what's happened in the last, um, with COVID in particular, you know, I have a view that actually what has happened with COVID and now ex exacerbated by the awful events in the Ukraine is probably a one in a hundred year event, which quite frankly, you've got, it's a equivalent to the, the, the 1930s depression and crash, and the tools and the means of addressing these problems that we've used in the last 30 or 40 years, they may not necessarily work. And actually, we do have a responsibility, and I'm hearing some pretty awful stories of people who can't afford to sort of boil themselves a cup of coffee. And some people will tell me with the way that electricity costs are going that it's cheaper to go to Weatherspoons to get a cup of coffee. Um, I heard this morning that people taking their, their family heirlooms to, to pawnbrokers to, 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 to be able, not just to get a few, a couple of hundred quid, to be able to live on for the next few years and, or next few weeks. And that from, that from the conservative point of view, it's not right that we should be a government when that happens. And we do need to address that problem.